Good morning, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Abhi. Yeah, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to um, another class on emo emotional wholeness. Thank you for being on time <clears throat> and being uh, ready and here. Uh, welcome to all our e-learning students also who uh, join in with us uh, at your time and convenience as you learn God's word. We are at our 14th week um, of our lesson and uh, we just have two more weeks to go. And um, just, uh, just a word that uh, by next week, your second assessment will be put up and you, you will have just a week to complete it. Um, so please do ensure that by next week, uh, you view your assessments and done it, do it uh, timely because post April 30th, the course finishes on the 29th of April. So post 29th of April, there will not be further corrections that's done. So please do ensure that uh, ne by next week when the assessment's put up that you would uh, complete your work and uh, stay on top of it so that uh, it doesn't uh, affect your final grades because these grades would be taken on for um, your, uh, uh, your final grades for the second year. All right, so we'll... Uh, so welcome to those who've just uh, come in. Um, we're on, we're, we're closing in. We are almost coming to the end of our uh, learning on emotional wholeness. And today we are at, uh, we are on, uh, on chapter 11, uh, sorry, chapter nine, sorry, chapter nine. And uh, we're going to be looking at living daily with the renewed mind. So, Last week, we had followed up on um, the second part of crucifying the flesh. We were we did uh, look at laying the axe to the root to uh, lust as well as pride. Uh, and we looked at how we can get rid of the works or the fruit of the flesh and uh, by by doing the following, which is to walk in the spirit, to live in the spirit, to walk in the spirit, then it was to um, uh, be be regular, continuously established and rooted in Jesus Christ, in the person of Jesus Christ, and uh, to cut off all kinds of influences that are ungodly, and to keep ourselves consecrated so that. Um, we we live in a place of uh, wholeness we uh, 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 continuously live in a place of wholeness uh what we're going to be looking at is uh, another um another factor of staying emotionally whole is to live with a renewed mind now going back to how we started um you would you would uh, recollect that one of the main causes of uh, um, emotional issues or the problems that we would face emotionally is the thoughts that we engage in, the wrong thoughts that we engage in. And um, I think we, we even spoke about it in our initial class of how uh, regularly we have so many thoughts that bombard our mind on a daily basis we have we have many many thoughts and some of these thoughts are about regular life these thoughts about ourselves as people thoughts about others thoughts about who we are so there are so many things that go on in our mind and we did see that one of the problems that bring about emotional brokenness one of it one among those causes was uh, our wrong thoughts or our negative form of thinking. And we did see how the thoughts that we engage in affects our uh, feelings, it affects our behavior, it affects our walk with God. And when we are not aligned in the right way or we do not take captive those thoughts and make them subject to the word of God, we find that we could walk into trouble. So today we're going to be uh, um, uh, focusing 
on the renewed mind and some of these verses are very familiar to us and we probably know these verses by heart we've read these verses many times so today we're going to look a little more deeper into what does this renewed mind mean and what are some of the elements of a renewed mind and how do we how are we careful that we have a good understanding and good knowledge about what this the renewed mind is as to talk about it so one of the verses that uh, is often quoted with the renewed mind is what we see in romans 12 verses 1 and 2 and this is something that i think many of us uh, are aware of and we 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 even are able to quote it we're able to speak of it right um but what i want to do is i i just want to maybe uh, that there is a, the NKJV version uh, is something that we generally use, but I, I really wanted to bring out um, another version that is the uh, amplified version and just read that part for you. So um, you know, just to just to give you a little bit more of meat from from the renewing uh, from what is meant by the renewal of the mind. So uh, let me read verses one and two in the amplified version. Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God, uh, in view of all the mercies of God, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, which means to this age and to what is right now or all over us, but be transformed or changed by the entire renewal of your mind. So in over here, there is there are the there, there a meaning of it is given in saying when you're saying renewal of your mind, changing the ideals and the attitude that one carries so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Okay, So, the, so Paul talks about being transformed or being changed. And the word transformed um, in, uh, you know, comes from a specific root word. And I'm, I'm just picking that up so kindly. Uh, yeah, so the so the uh, word transformed comes from the word metamorpho, which uh, you know the English word is, as we understand, is metamorph metamorphosis. That is something that changes, that transfigures, or that transforms. And the word metamorphosis, you know, for all of us who have been biology students or you know has learned about science know that one of the processes in nature of how uh, a larva turns a pupa turns into a butterfly is through a stage of metamorphosis that is the stage of the larva that is more worm like changes and becomes a butterfly it becomes a flying beautiful creature so it's that same word that's being used here be transformed by the renewal of your mind renewing of your mind and we see that transformation happens when you renew your mind so that you can prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of god so it is it is uh um and paul is actually saying he's giving an instruction here you know and says so he's not saying and brothers you know be careful not to it's saying do not do not <clears throat> follow the ways of the world or follow what the things of the world are or things of this age are, are but be changed be transformed be completely changed by the renewing of your mind and it bring he brings about it again that in ephesians 4 23 in saying being renewed in the spirit of your mind so this is a very important part of um, us staying emotionally whole and staying in emotional fullness as uh, as God would desire. Okay, so what? How do we do this? What do we do, or what are some of the things that we do? I mean, we read this so often. So what do we do? Um, and 
how can we follow a process of knowing that you are in the process of renewing your mind? So one of the first things, apologies, sorry. One of the first things we see is, is to be able to take on the thoughts and the ways of God, okay? To be able to take on God's thoughts and ways for us. Um, and I, I want to highlight a scripture for you on Isaiah 55, 8 to 11. Uh, would somebody kindly take that verse up and read? Because, um, you know, I, 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 I find it very hard when there's so much of silence. It's like I'm hearing myself and myself only. So somebody, would you all just pick up um, Isaiah 55, verses 8 Shall to 11? And read. Yes, go ahead, Abni. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Abni. So, you know, this is a beautiful scripture where it, uh, one, it contrasts <clears throat> um, our mind and it contrasts the mind of God. It says, his thoughts and our thoughts has no equivalent. There is no equivalency in the way that I think and the way that God thinks, okay, or the way that, uh, or God's ways and my ways. So, and, and he gives that description and says, as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are my uh, ways and my thoughts higher than yours. Okay, so you can imagine, you know, you look up to the sky and you cannot even see the, you know, the end, the uh, like a horizon in the sky, right? It is, it is an endless vast space so even if you want, wanted to look at something higher you can't see it because it's so 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 high it's so so lofty and that's the description god is giving here that your thoughts and my thoughts are so vast are so different are so uh, so opposingly different and that's what we are called to do we're called to take on the thoughts of God, which means, what does it mean? It means that you don't focus on your thoughts and your ways because they are limited, they are small, they are maybe unidirectional. There is one way of how we think, but God's ways are much, much higher. The dimensions are much, much greater. And something else that the verse, verses 10 to 11 says, that you know, it brings about an example here that as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven do not return there. That is, whenever it rains, whenever it snows, it reaches the heaven and I mean, it, sorry, it reaches the earth. It does not go back up. But what does it do? It waters the earth. It goes in, and it brings forth forth fruit. Okay, and it says it brings forth fruit so much so that it even feeds the sower and it feeds the eater, okay? So will God's word be that comes from his mouth. So everything that God has put in his word is his thoughts and his ways for us. The way that we, we understand God's thoughts and his ways is primarily by the word and then by the imparting of the, uh, of, of the anointing of the spirit by what the spirit tells us or, or directs us. And it says once this word is there, once the word has gone forth, it will not go back empty. It does not go back void, but it will accomplish. So it will bring forth whatever it was sent forth for. So we see when you take on the thoughts of God, continue to dwell, mull, 
munch, um, you know, like the cow does. You regurgitate it, you know, you, you keep bringing it back and back and back and back to get back the juices. When you do that, it will accomplish the thing it was sent for. So that's what one, a way of renewing your mind is to taking on the thoughts and ways of God and knowing that the thoughts and ways of God are far more greater, far more bigger than our own thoughts and our own ways. So that's one way that that we 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 live or, or what a renewed mind is and what do we do. The second is to be able to take on the attitudes of Christ. So would someone uh, open to Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 please? Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Anybody? Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Shall I read it? Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Okay, so what is it says? Let the mind, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So the way that Jesus, as he walked the earth, what were what were his attitudes what and and we see the attitude of christ through what through how he ministered to people through what he taught through what he spoke through the way that he lived his life and that's something that you see you know there, there are some attitudes that you see of christ by reading through the gospels of how did he live here as you know, he walked the earth, and how did he walk that earth? How did he walk the earth? So we all know that it is only what we harbor in our attitudes is what will actually come out in our behaviors. Suppose you harbor anger towards some somebody. Um, quite rightly, you are going to express it in some way or the other. How much ever you attempt to have a pretense of it, it will show out in your words or in your behavior or in your demeanor. Right. So or if you have an attitude of love to someone, whatever you do comes out of that love. So we see that all that how Jesus walked the earth, he, he showed his nature and his attributes, the way he showed compassion, the way he um, he he felt he was moved um, when he saw people. What he taught is what he what what was in his mind what was the things of god so we we're called when we renew, when we saying renewing our mind is to take on that attitude of christ so maybe let's take simple examples of maybe there is somebody at work or somebody who who is with you who's associating with you can be very annoying you know that may be somebody annoying and just uh, um uh, just gives you a very, very hard time uh, or rubs the wrong side of you. And often it is, you know, you feel sarcasm at the tip of your lips that you're waiting to, to bring about something to shut them down or to put them in their place. What is, so you, when we're saying have, have the same mind, which was also in Christ Jesus, what would Jesus do at a point like this? What would Jesus do if he was faced with a person like this? Maybe there was this probably patience. There is a sense of love. There is a sense of long suffering. There's a sense of understanding where they are coming from. So, putting on the attitudes of Christ is renewing your mind. So, every time you're faced with something really practical, and so what would Jesus do in a situation like this? Uh, Holy Spirit, help me to bear that same attitude that um, that Christ had. If you know, Christ was standing right here and dealing with him. Or how does Christ, how, how does Jesus deal with him at this point of time? So bearing that attitude, taking on that very same attitude, okay? So we looked at, uh, one is taking on the thoughts of God. Next, we, we looked at taking on the attitude of Christ. The, the third way is to take on the knowledge of God, to, to, to know more and more about him. Okay, so um, would someone take pick up Colossians chapter 3, verse 10 and read it? Somebody else other than Rupa and Avani, someone else. Colossians chapter 3, verses 10, so that 
so that you know I can hear all your lovely voices too. Colossians 3.10 Come on, Colossians 3.10. Okay, now I may need to... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, someone. Go ahead. Thank you. Colossians 3.10. And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Abhinas. Okay, so Colossians 3.10 says, when we are made... Uh, we made new by by the spirit, but this new man is being renewed in the knowledge of God. We continuously have greater uh, revelations of who God is, knowing, getting deeper in our understanding of who God is, knowing His nature, His attributes. So when you spend more time to understand the nature of God, knowing who God is, who's, and, and who's the one who renews us, that becomes a way of how we renew our mind. You begin to know who God is. When you renew your mind with the knowledge, with the understanding, with greater revelations of your Creator, greater revelations of Jesus, greater revelations of the Holy Spirit, and how He works when a, in in you, you live with a renewed mind. Okay, so now going from here, we have we 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 know that these things are what what it means to live what with a renewed mind. Now what. Does a renewed mind mean that it is a one-off process or it's something that happens just one time? Renewing your mind is a continuous process. It's something that happens right from the time you become a born again until the time, you know, the Lord calls us home. It is a continuous process. It's something that you continue doing. It's like eating. It's not something that you can stop because if you stop, you will definitely see deficits and deficiencies in you. So similarly, this is a continuous process. And this process, the more that you stand in that place of being, having a mind that's renewed, you continue to receive new revelations of who he is and you grow in the understanding of God. You grow greater in who he is what what is his purpose in your life what is his will in your life how does he work you just keep growing and grow you grow from from strength to strength from glory to glory from maturity to maturity it keeps going on so this is something that keeps going on and on it's a continuous a regular daily process and it's something that we need to keep doing uh, and the uh, as we as we commit to doing that we find that even it begin it changes our soul um it also involves the conquest of the mind and that's something that we looked uh, in the in a chapter before how do we what what do we address here we understand that the mind is a place where we need to conquer and we must learn to every thought that comes to us to be able to take up take up take it captive and make it in obedience or in, or in alignment with god we need to renew our mind and develop a positive mindset we looked at that right so since we did cover that we we won't pay too much attention there at this point of time you know if you could go back to to that lesson and reread that the Another thing that it involves is um, to understand that our mind has, um, uh, you know, we need to balance these three things. We need to we need to balance what we and what we know as our reasoning. We need to balance our renewed mind and the leading of the Holy Spirit. It is an interplay of these three: our reasoning our minds as well as the leading of the holy spirit and this is some and all of this is something that we will just uh, quickly go through and um, uh, uh, begin to uh, understand better with with probably some examples so let's look at the the that uh, uh, the renewing of our mind being a continuous process so as we said 
uh, your the your spirit person your spirit person is is what this is where you discover and where you explore and understand new things about god and grow in the knowledge and the understanding of him now as you do that as you stand in obedience to do that uh, your person your your soul or your thoughts begins to receive revelation your new person begins to receive revelation and this in turn begins to affect your thinking it begins to change your thinking okay so let's take a couple of verses and then we'll probably draw out from there so um would someone read uh uh, Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. We already read Colossians 3, 10. Would somebody please like to read Ephesians 1, um, 17 to 19? Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. I could read last one. Go ahead, Taisha. Okay, and it reads, you said Ephesians 1, 17 to 19? Yes. Okay, I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the open which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength. Thank you. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you. So we, what we do see here from these scriptures is when we are um, in a place of renewing our minds we are growing in the knowledge and the wisdom of god okay so i think that's that's step one each time we renew our minds by getting back on the word we are growing in who god is we're growing in knowing his attributes his nature uh, who the, the surpassing knowledge of God begins to build in us. Okay. And we are growing in that. And it is, it's what you did know about God as a new believer changes how, when you get back on the word. And that's why the ministry of the word is so, so very important. It's not just enough to be saved, to, to, um, to be assured of salvation and leave it at that but you need to continue to be discipled in the word of god and that's why as new believers um just taking them to a place of a of a sinner's prayer and leaving them there uh you know you you haven't given them the tools of how they can mature and grow in their faith so it isn't enough to just leave leave people or disciples or new believers as they are, but to help them in the word, to help them grow in the knowledge of God. And how do they do that? You do that by getting them to come back on the word. So when you look at Ephesians 1, 17, 19, it says, you know, it's a prayer that Paul is making. And he says, May God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, be there to build your knowledge in him. And why? So as you do that, what happens? So that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That is your discovery and your and wh whatever you you are um, hearing or whatever you know of God will be opened your understanding opens so that you what 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 would you know you would know the hope of his calling you would know what his purposes are you would know the riches 
of his inheritance for you what all does he have in store for you as a believer is it is it just salvation or are there many other things that he's given to you it's his authority it's it's the power that we have it's um it's his presence it's the uh, guidance of the holy spirit it's healing it's deliverance it's um it's uh, empowering there are the inheritance that is then so much more the eyes of your understanding will be opened and you will begin to see what is this what else will you see you will see the greatness of his power you will see the mighty work of his power in your life as you grow in the knowledge of god and this happens just by the ministry of the word and that's why we say this this is a continuous process so the spirit man is being born again and yes becomes a new man but our spirit needs to grow in that knowledge we need to grow in the strength of god grow in the grace of god grow in the mercy of god and this comes in as we read god's word we also receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation that is given by the power of the holy spirit and as we grow in the knowledge about god our father we get to know we grow in the inheritance we understand the inheritance he has given to us and what he has done for us in christ we do also see the power that's been made available for us so as our spirit receives this this wisdom as it receives this knowledge as it receives this revelation it begins to work in our minds our minds become renewed and we change our thinking and that thinking changes the way that we feel changes the th way that we um, behave it changes our lifestyle and this becomes an ongoing process so it's almost like you know every time there is a new revelation that you have of god it begins to seep in it begins to seep into your mind it begins to seep in into your behavior and into your lifestyle so the and there's never a, a stop to this it's it's always a process that keeps going on because the word of god is so deep and it, um, and i'm sure that all of us have felt that you know you've read the scripture maybe a hundred times but the hundred and first time that you read it you find something you, god reveals something to you the spirit of wisdom comes and reveals something absolutely afresh to you and that begins to take take root in your mind take root in your in in your uh, in your soul and that begins to change you so this continues to happen over and over again and we we look at it as an ongoing process now think of think of a time that you're not doing it what happens the spirit man becomes dry it becomes dull it becomes um it becomes uh, uh, uh thirsty and there isn't uh, and, and and as a result you know it, it begins to affect the way that you think it begins to affect your soul so coming to that place of you know it's it's like watering a plant you know the you need to do it every day you can't suppose that all because you've done it for the first 14 years or first 15 years and then leave it to draw from from its surrounding it's something that requires a, um, constant nourishment so so think of of your spirit man like that that it's something that has to be continuously nourished by god's word and the leading of the holy spirit and and receiving that so that it seeps in into your soul and it bears that fruit okay and um and and you know that that just knowing that in itself brings about a desire to go back to god's word knowing that you know just by doing it um uh, in with all with all your uh, uh, you know with all your attention and with all your focus does so much more than just actually having it picked off from your to-do list it has so much more that happens the more that we dwell in god's word it begins to change our spirit uh, our our soul it begins to change our mind thereby changing our lifestyle so that's continues to be a process that um, that helps to uh, bring about a renewed mind 
Now, moving on to the uh, to the third point, like I said, the second point of conquest of the mind is something that um, uh, uh, we we have dealt with. So we're going to be looking at to see how do we learn to balance the renewed mind. Now, even if 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 you are at um, if you have your notes open, you will see uh, that small little diagram and um, just just a quick explanation of what that diagram means is to show you that there are three elements in the believer's mind. Three elements that we've got to focus on. Uh, in the in the believer's mind so one is a reason okay the second is the leading of the holy spirit and the third is the word of god <clears throat> and the promises and the principles that are there in god's word okay so as we're living the renewed mind we need to see how do these three elements interplay with one another how do they weave in together what is what is an important part of this and we also so we, we we're learning how to balance you know we learn to balance this the renewed mind with these three elements and also if you look at the other the right side of it you would see the word presumption there how is it that we avoid getting into a trap of presumption now we will we will learn this a little bit more and focus on it as we go so let's look at these three elements first and and understand so reason what is what is the meaning of reason the meaning of reason is to okay let me open this out so that it's not just my voice. What do you think the meaning of reason is? Um, you could put it up on the chat. What does reasoning mean? And is it something that is, that is, uh, hmm, that is of God or of the enemy? What is reason and is it of God or is it of the enemy? Yes, Kennedy, go ahead. I think it's just being uh, analytical, critical, when you're dealing okay. with a situation where you have to analyze it and question and think more how it's going to affect you on what you're doing. Okay. Very good. Okay. So you said reasoning, uh, Candy says reasoning is uh, an ability to analyze and think about uh, situations and see what would affect you, what wouldn't. Okay. Avni says it is, uh, it is of God. Okay. Um, yes, Shay, go ahead. Uh, it's a logical way of accessing um, any situation or any um, or any problem. Basically, um, it's it's of God because again, God made us and put a brain in our in our heads to mm -hmm. reason out things. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it could also be a tool of the enemy if mm -hmm. we don't renew our minds just as you've been teaching us, right? So mm -hmm. invariably, the ultimate goal of our reasoning is supposed to line up with God's word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you, Shay. Shay, Shay, in a nugget, did what the entire class had to say. Thank you, Shay. Yeah, so that, that's, that's right. Yeah, so uh, reasoning is something that that god has given to us it is something that god's designed and he has given given to us it is the ability to question to logically think to investigate to strategize to um to bring about like cause and effect and uh, it is something that 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 involves also our abilities of intellect like for example it's raining okay what would you do you will take an umbrella or a raincoat okay or if you have to go to a cousin's house that's a couple of miles away you reason and you logically say walking that is not going to help i may need to take a um uh, take a vehicle, take a bus, or take a take a car, or, or, or some form of trans transportation. It is something that is given to us by God. It's an ability that God has given 
for us. So God, if, if um, you know, for those of us who are in the counseling class, we, we looked at it, that God has given us a rational mind, an ability to think. And this is something that is absolutely biblical. So the ability to investigate, to strategize is something that's given by God. And we will see a lot of scriptures that corroborate the truth that God is the one who's given us a mind to think and to strategize. So let's look at a couple of examples. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 6. It says, every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. So every person who walks in prudence is someone who acts with knowledge. You need to use your thinking and your understanding. Like, for example, Maybe you don't have enough ration for the day for the evening, okay? And uh, your store is opened. So you go, you use your rational mind and do what you're supposed to do rather than saying God's going to provide and bring the storekeeper to provide the food here for me on my table. No, you go out and make your purchases because God has given you an ability to reason and to logically use the resources that you have. So you act with knowledge and you act with prudence. Or Proverbs 19.2, it says, Also, it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge, and he sins who hastens with his feet. So what is this, what is this verse telling us? That God desires for us to build on our intellectual abilities to build on certain skills. So if there is something that you are doing that you feel um, or that you, that you sense that you're not having the right skills or the knowledge to do, it is good for your soul to be to build up on that, to build that intellectual ability. So is it, so it is good to, 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 to educate yourself. It is good to get into some form of skill building. It is good to do things that will build upon your knowledge. And that's something that God wants of us to do. Um, uh, just, just not being in a position of, okay, I am, I am taught of the Lord and great will be my peace, right? But we need to open up those opportunities for us to be continuously, intellectually, um, uh, uh, built up, intellectually peaked, right? So we, it is a good thing that we build those abilities, something that God wants us to do. Proverbs 24, 6, for by wise counsel, you will wage your own war and in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. So when you have adequate knowledge, you will know what is the important right things that you need to do. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. You will know how to deal with your own battles there. And of course, with multitude of counselors, that is when you do get the help of others, uh, you know, there is, there is a greater benefit. Ecclesiastes 10.10, 10, if the ax is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but wisdom brings success. So what does this say? If you're dull in something, okay, if, if the tools you are using for whatever you may be engaging in, if you don't have the right tools or if you don't have the right information or the right skills or the right techniques, and if you do not do anything to build yourself up, then you have to really, really work hard. But wisdom brings success. So just having the wisdom to go and sharpen your tool or sharpen your technique, sharpen your methods, sharpening your skills brings about a lot more of strength. It brings about a lot more of wisdom and, and success. So is God against you building your knowledge and building your wisdom? No, God is not opposed to that. God, in fact, wants us to, to enhance whatever skills he's given us in whatever form he's given us. And he wants us to build ourselves in that maturity. So if you see in 1 Corinthians 14, 20, it says, Brethren, do not be children in understanding. However, in malice be babes, but in understanding be mature. So it's saying, don't be, don't be immature 
in begin in in getting knowledge or getting understanding don't be immature don't be um, don't be like children don't be like babies but be mature what is it that we have to be babies in in malice in something that is not of god something that is that is uh, contrary to what god wants that's what we need to be literally little uh, developed in but our development should be should be and ought to be in the point of growing our wisdom and our knowledge okay um so god wants us to be in a place where we where we build ourselves build our maturity build our build our understanding so we've we've understood that reasoning is from god it is an ability to logically do things <clears throat> and a lot of times we we need to use our reasoning we need to use our logic as we move on a day to day basis like for example uh you know um, maybe simple things of of what am i going to wear today or what is it that you know where am i going to uh, what am i going to cook to eat today there are things that god's given you maybe there are 10 items that you have you use the wisdom you find out maybe a nice recipe to do and that's something that god wants you to do he wants us to use our the capacities he's given us uh, to to go ahead with with things okay so that's part of reasoning now something that supersedes this is the leading of the holy spirit that's the second element that we will go into about understanding what the renewed mind is now before we go that i think we have around 3 minutes and i think i'll stop here um and look seek for questions or any thoughts or anything um and then maybe after our break we will get back into the, the part the second element of leading of the holy spirit so any thoughts open for any questions here are we all that clear or have we not understood anything it has to be either so any questions any doubts any thoughts why is the summer getting too much on each of us is it too hot ma'am i think it was very clear to us Okay, and, and actually, uh, this is the strength that we gain with the renewed mind. That many times, uh, you know, though I I understood that very late, and now I'm literally enjoying it, <laughs> understanding mm -hmm. the power of renewed mind, mm -hmm. because uh, no one had ever taught us the way we have learned it in this college. Like, it's not uh, so much taught in the churches, probably, or. Uh, mm -hmm. because we miss out on this very foundational truth uh, we struggle to see that victory in our lives that breakthroughs in our life you know we keep praying but without the word prayers are uh, uh, you know not working well prayers you know some people just pray and they think why is the answer not coming but i personally understood that in a situation like if i have a headache i need a a uh, uh, medicine for my headache if i have a stomach ache there is a different medicine for my stomach ache so what i understood was for every situation god has an answer in the word mm -hmm. and i have uh, i have experienced that i have taken the word i have sown that seed in my life and i have seen the answers coming like uh, i mean amazingly mm -hmm. god doing that work uh, where you started with his ways are higher we cannot mm -hmm. comprehend his ways we can only believe and you know walk with him knowing that he is leading us so beautifully when we depend on him completely so uh, i i really enjoy this uh, learning about renewed mind and i i gain so much from it because i feel so strengthened after the learning and after applying it and uh, seeing the answers coming so ma'am thank you for teaching that beautifully and thank you so much Praise God! Thank you, Amni, for sharing. Thank you. Yes, she. You have a response, a comment, a question. Yeah, yes, more of a comment. Um, I, I, I think this is the frustration of um, new converts when um, 
they notice that the things they were struggling with, you know, they don't see themselves being released from those things, even though the years they had made Jesus Lord and Savior of their lives. And I think early on, you know, in the church, generally speaking, there wasn't so much message on why people should renew their minds. Instead, there was more of demands on what they should be and what they should not. And they never kind of, like, there was really so much teachings, maybe now, but back then. Uh, and I think somehow or the other, I think this is the frustration of some Christians that they feel, yes, now they're new creation, they're new creation in Christ, which is totally true. But in manifesting that new creation, there has to be something that goes on, you know, in the mind of that person. So this is a very, very, very um, important, important topic when, it, when we talk about renewing our minds. And I think just again that even if we're renewing our minds, we shouldn't stop because we should continually, you know, keep renewing and renewing and renewing our minds. Um, no matter how much we have studied God's word, it just keeps on going and going and going so that our minds are fresh on the word and our minds are in alignment with the Holy Spirit, how he wants us to reason and how he wants us to think. Just my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. I, I think you, you said it so. Um, it's so true um, that those you know, when, when new believers come in, when they, when they, they just begin to see another world, you know, when uh, they are, they become new believers and their spirit man changes. And for a week, they are like on top of the world. And slowly, um, when things of the soul begins to come up, and they are beginning to see, why did that change? Why am I continuing to be the same person that I was? It should have all changed. It should have all just with the finger just, you know, kind of changed out that way. But um, a lot of times we don't see that, that uh, it takes going back into the word and it takes us being washed and cleansed by the word so that we can come out spotless and blameless. Yeah, so that, that was right. Um, I think there are two questions by Louis and Anita, you've raised your hand. Uh, we are on for a break. So let's meet after a break and we'll start with Louis' question and then Anita's question. So on my clock, it shows 10.53. So we will be back in 10 minutes, which is 11.03. So see you soon with a cup of coffee.